Hey and welcome to another episode of Tech Doctor TV. Today we've got a build, a I'll say live, even though it's recorded, uh, but we're doing a review uh, on a cheap budget case because what we're doing here today is a budget build for a client. Uh, and the idea was to keep the money down uh, as low as possible because it was a repla unexpected replacement of a machine which has decided enough's enough. And after 12, 13 years, I can sort of understand why it's said that. Um, so what we're gonna do is we'll do a, um, a build of a basic one, we're basically a, a 12th gen i3 with an MSI motherboard, um, eight gig crucial DDR4 and a team uh, NVMe one terabyte drive. So we're gonna build it up, uh, install Windows 11, uh, get that all sorted and then it's off camera, I'm gonna do a clone of the, uh, the existing drive um, because he's got a few things on there which are a little bit difficult to come by. So uh, that's what we'll be doing. Uh, and we'll also be looking at a case, as I said, the idea being uh, budget friendly. We uh, have a case, it's a brand I haven't used before, nor have I heard of. Uh, it's, it's Rotanium. Now I don't know, um, where it's made, I'm suspecting it's like a Chinese brand, but it's a Rotanium Prime 301. Um, it's a, I believe it's an MATX case, and it comes with a 650 watt power supply, but I would suspect that would probably be closer to maybe 500 watts. I, I doubt it would have the full 650 watt capacity or ability, but for what we're doing, it'll be more than enough. Uh, so since last time you saw me, I have rearranged things. So uh, I'm hoping the lighting is sufficient because I've moved the camera uh, because I treated myself to a, uh, an adjustable desk because bending over like this, uh, working on something is not great for your back. So the idea was to get something that I could adjust. So we'll just push a button and we'll just let it adjust itself as if by magic. Now I got this, um, I think the brand is Otto. And I got that from uh, Officeworks and it was $4.99, which I think is pretty cool for a, um, a fully electric desk. And let's check the angles. That looks all right from over there. Uh, yes, you can see the shine off the back of my head, which is lovely. Uh, now, I apologize in advance. There may be an interruption. I have a client coming to pick up a laptop uh, who uh, had the, um, the screen ribbon replaced. Um, screen was fine, laptop was fine, but the screen ribbon it was on one of those foldy backy ones and I and uh, I think it just got pinched too much over time so I put new ribbon in uh, fiddly uh, I should have recorded it because it would have been a good one but uh, it was a bit of a rush job so uh, but anyway I've got this uh, so that's why I might be looking over my shoulder once in a while uh, but I've also got the mirror uh, so yeah having the desk here is really good uh, I've got a couple of uh, desk mounted power points so instead of just rabbiting on and doing nothing we'll get the build underway. I'll just get my little little work light happening. Perhaps that's not obscuring too much. So yes, we've just got a basic MSI Pro uh, H610. Um, didn't need any of the bells and whistles. It was the uh, the cheapest motherboard available. And it's coming from uh, an i3, I think it was an i3, I like 920, like one of the first, um, one of the first 920s out there, I think, uh, or very close to it. So uh, I believe that was dual core at whatever speed it ran, which wouldn't have been hugely fast, uh, coming up to like a nice quad core, which tops out at, you know, it's uh, uh, four gigahertz thereabouts. We'll find out. I should know these things, but uh, you know, you don't always, you don't always remember. So we'll get these things out and get the thing happening underway. Going to try and do a fairly quick build because it's a fairly, uh, fairly straightforward build. So I'm going to get what I need out of this box, namely the back plate. Um, unlikely I'll need those SATA cables. The all important uh, M.2 screws and bits. We're going to turf this and we're going to put everything we need in that box so the client can have 
the spare bits if they need. Uh, in my experience, it generally just sits in the box and does nothing, uh, but it's just good to give that to the client. All right, so open this. Now, for those who may not be that overly familiar with building a machine, you've got your little plastic um, cover, which covers the, the motherboard pins. Um, just leave that there. You don't have to worry about that because it is, it'll just pop out. So we'll grab the old thing out. I'll do it the way I'm going back to the front, how I normally do it. So we'll just plop him in. In the words of Gus, the blackboard, upside down, Miss Jane. Reference to Romper Room, for those old enough to remember. So click that down, bring the arm over, and this then, whoops, just pops out. Usually it pops out very easily, but today decided to be a bit of a turd, but nevertheless we got there. So I hope everyone's been all right. It's, uh, I, know, I think it's about 25 degrees here in uh, tropical Townsville. Um, and it is June, so it's winter here. Um, but winter in Townsville is not, it, it's, it's not, it's not winter, essentially. You, uh, they say oh, winter this year in Townsville was on a Tuesday because we don't get that many cold days. We get, we get some cooler nights, which is nice. Make sure you get four, four clicks when you're putting that in. Um, yeah, <clears throat> it's nice to get some cold weather. Uh, so that's one thing, you know, you miss from living in other locale, locales, locales, locations. Um, but I mean, Tasmania, as I mentioned, I was there uh, that was that was just too cold. That was just getting silly. So we, um, yeah, we're back up here. 26. This time of year, you can't complain. There's not a lot of humidity, and the temperatures. I mean, it's a little bit above average at the moment. We've had days of 27, 28, which is pretty warm for for winter. Um, but uh, we uh, generally get to the, like the mid 20s, and occasionally. We have been known to get down to single digits overnight in winter. We have Ugg boots on standby for when it drops below 20. Isn't it? Sound like we're a bunch of sooks. But honestly, 20 degrees here compared to 20 degrees in Tasmania is vastly different. It's a different kind of, the sun's different. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with talk of weather get these things out now the clip for the PCIe okay number three so yeah we'll get through this fairly quickly so we can have get onto that case because I'll be interested I'm not expecting a lot um, from from this case because for the case and with the power supply included it was $49 so that's a you know that that is a very budget case um, so I'm not expecting miracles. I'm just hoping that it's, um, you know, straight, uh, reasonably easy to work on, and doesn't um, have razor sharp edges like the, the cases of days gone by, where you would almost be guaranteed to leave some of your blood in a case because the edges in there were that sharp. It wasn't funny. I keep forgetting where the camera is, so forgive me if I'm looking away but yeah I recommend if you're going to work on PCs a lot you've got to invest in one of these because it's just a back saver and it's got a it's got a draw it was a bit hard to fit these clamps on though they seriously just made it there was no I had to force them on there literally wasn't even a millimeter but I wish I'd done it a while ago and it's nice to have the electric motor because it just makes it easier. All right, so that's in. Make sure we got that going, yep. Um, so, I mean, how simple is a the machine these days? Like a basic machine, RAM, hard drive, CPU, that's it, that's done. <clears throat> it's kind of crazy. 
Okay, I'm going to try and not get myself into a mess because nothing worse when you finish you've got this massive mess to try and clean up. So we'll move those things out of the way. And I'm going to move the motherboard over on top of the case while we have a look. Not the case, the box it came in. All right, let's have a look at this. Rotanium. And, da -da -da -da. and yet, what is it? Friday the 16th of June. Reminds me, eight days until our wedding anniversary. Then not forget that. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I take one of these out, it's got plastic and polystyrene. Static shock. So, I'm going to try and avoid that. And the way I do that is I'm standing on a, on a plastic work um, thing, but you slap it. Slap, slap, slap. Okay. Alright, so it's packed about the same as you'd expect any case to be. Get this plastic off. And let's see what we get for our money. Oops. Who put that there? So I might move this so it's still in shot. There we go. And I can address the camera. So let's have a look at the case. Looks pretty standard. You've got room for an optical drive, and we will be putting one of them in. I'm just going to remove it from the old build, but uh, I won't bore you with that. These are a little bit tight, but you'd expect that, but it's all right. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, yep, yep. I'm playing all backwards today. Everything feels like it's the wrong way around. I don't know if that's me. Okay, so the thickness of the side panels is pretty standard. It's not what you'd expect from say, um, uh, uh, like the Cooler Master Silencio range, which are a lot thicker, and they of course have their sound deadening material. Um, but it's not, I've actually seen flimsier. Uh, it's got it's got a grate on the side there if you want to put a, a side fan on, but um, in all honesty, they they can just get in the way sometimes. If you've got an exhaust fan, and for a basic machine like this, that's going to be enough. This a bit sticky, but all right. Um, now it's got the little, um, you know, it's got a a bulge for want of a better word so that will help a little bit with with cabling there's not going to be a lot of cable management going on so let's see what they've given us inside so um, there's a, I was actually saying it's, it's a 685 watt uh, power supply but yeah as I said I would be surprised if we were getting a getting a consistent 685 but even if it's only putting out 500, that's still plenty for the i3. Um, and this client is there's not going to be any gaming uh, yeah, above solitaire, that kind of thing. Screws and standoffs, I mean, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, these tyres that come with it, uh, just a little tip. Um, you don't want to use these to, to, to cable manage, like your power supply or anything. You really don't want to be using this inside the case because um, I did see it um, on another channel, uh, Kerry Holtzman. Um, if you happen to see this, Kerry, how'd you do? Um, his, he advised, and it's, and it's, it's good advice, uh, don't use this because there's wire inside <clears throat> and your wire can either fray, uh, peel at the edge ends or you know get brittle. And if that metal makes contact, with any the case or anything or the other motherboard, heaven forbid, it's gonna uh, it's gonna be a big uh, big problem. So we, they're good for transport or temporary, but otherwise we you know we generally get rid of them. There's my little box. There it is. Okay, 
the usual fare, my Nemesis, the USB 3 plug, which I friggin' hate, um, color coded and labeled. Yes, labeled, uh, but it's it's not in white. It's just in uh, um, uh, the the lab that raised. That's the word raised. The letters are raised on the plastic. So that's standard. Big old rubber band tying up the power supply. Uh, again, what you would expect. You know, nothing nothing special. No uh, braided covers or anything. Bit of a dog's breakfast. But functional, what have we got? We've got the, the main line, as you would expect. We've got our 12 volt, extra 12 volt. Um, and we have a single six pin PCIe. Now given this, this power supply, you probably wouldn't want to run anything that takes more than a single six pin, because I just don't think it would handle it. Um, so you might, you might get a, um, I don't know, a 3050, maybe, but maybe not even that. You'd probably be limited to like an older, uh, lower powered card. Um, depending, you can always you can always chuck an adapter on on you know Molex or I think there are even some no, there's not SATA ones. Uh, Molex to give you another PCIe. But again, you're not going to be using this for a gaming a serious gaming machine. Uh, you just wouldn't. It's it won't have the power. Um, we're looking at purely from a budget build perspective. So, all right, so let's untangle these things. Have a little bit of um, order. Do, 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 do. One of these days I'll be organized and I might actually do a live, a live one, but I'm trying to operate, you know, in the, in the sense that, you know, act, treat this as if it's live. However, you know, in post I will edit out some of the more mundane bits. Now, here you go, this is uh, interesting. The, uh, the fan back here actually has a Molex pass-through. Uh, it doesn't connect via a fan header. Um, it's not a big deal. You may prefer to have one uh, with a fan header, so just swap it out if you need to. Uh, but, you know, that's gonna, you, you, I mean, who's, who's gonna, gonna wanna go in and be controlling one single fan? So the, again, it's for simplicity cost savings, so yeah, I've got no problem with it. I don't care if it's running flat out, it's not gonna make that much of a noise. If you had too many fans in there, then yeah, it's gonna make a lot of noise. Uh, so let's flip all that over. Uh, we've got pre-installed standoffs, which is, uh, which is handy. So I'll bring this back a bit now that it's, it's down. Right. Uh, again, I would like to have an overhead camera so I could show you this, but we're really having a look at the uh, at the case and the ease of uh, working with it. Now I can see, as far as cable management goes, there's no option to be passing that 12 volt up and over the motherboard. Um, again, you can't really expect much for uh, this this price point, and um, uh, and it's not a windowed case anyway. So what you want to do is, is keep your cables neat and tidy, but you don't have to be, um, you know, so pedantic about it that it's, you know, there's, oh, the cable's coming up the motherboard. Uh, um, if that really is an issue for you, you probably could take the power supply out uh, and pass it through. Um, but I don't really see the point. Is that right in my face? Uh, I don't see the point of that because I just think it's... Um, you know, you're just spending time on something that's not really necessary. Um, now, whenever I say something like that, it's, it's my point of view. Your point of view may differ. And, you know, you do what you like. I'm just talking from my perspective. And, and I know this client in particular, they won't be looking inside the case. Now, getting this backplate on, the I.O. shield, it's proven to be a bit of a... Sh it. It's quite a tight fit, which is good, but you shouldn't be struggling. Now, see, I can get the top 
to clip in, but not the bottom. Am I going to have to remove this band to do this? Okay, there's the bottom. Hmm. Excuse me for a second. That side's in. Whew, we nearly had a nearly had a bit of blood there. Well, I can tell you right now, this is far more difficult than it needs to be. It's not a confident fit either. No, that's not sitting flush at all. See, I get the top in and then the other side pops out. figure out what's going on here. All right, this is uh, <clears throat> not a great start. This is uh, being very problematic to get in. So I'm gonna remove that fan because it's, it's, it's not in the way per se, but it is uh, hampering me. So, Get it in and then put this back in. Three. And four. All right. Hmm. This fan doesn't have the usual telltale sign on the back to say this is the back. The only way you're going to see is if it's got the extra framing. So just, just be aware of that. All right, let's try this without the fan in the way. All right, that was much easier. All right, so you need to remove the fan pretty much to get that IO shield in, because um, it's a pain. Uh, and the back is a bit, it's a bit on the flimsy side. Internal framing is uh, is pretty much standard. Like I've seen, it's as good as any I've seen uh, on uh, comparable boards, even on the um, you know the thermal takes that come with their own power supply that might you might pay double for. Um, build quality isn't that much different to that, except for that. But that's just like the tightness. Um, so we need to add a couple more standoffs. Actually, I'll just relocate those ones rather than, there we go. So that one. Someone's playing their music. You better not have a repeat of the other week where the, mu the music and the carry-on from next door went until friggin' three o'clock in the morning. Wasn't happy. Have a party by all means and enjoy yourself, but for God's sake, have some consideration once you get past, well, I know it's Friday night. Ah, get off my lawn. Uh, there. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so now we're going to pop this fella in. Bloody things. All right, so that's sitting in there quite nicely. Um, 
So the, the, the alignment of the um, standoff holes is nice. You don't have to force it in as you would do with, with some motherboards where you, uh, some cases where you've really got to slam that motherboard up against the end. All right, so which, I'll test the screw on the spare standoff so I can make sure we're gonna be happy. Yep, they're good. All right, how many have we got? Again, remember, I have this on the lowest torque setting so it um, doesn't over tighten. One. Oh, okay. Bear with me. Customers here. Okay, we're back. Sorry, I will cut that. Uh, where was I? Ah, oh, yes. Polly? Polly? Nothing in there for you. It's my snossage dog thinking that whatever's there is for her. Do, do, do. Yeah. Magnetic tip screwdrivers, they're just, you can't live without them. Now this looks like it could, this could use a re-magnetizing, so we'll just give it a little You can get these as a magnetizer and demagnetizer. So then, boom, that just improves the uh, magnetic <coughs> properties of it. Two more. So I, I'm just loving these uh, since the advent of uh, the M.2 drives. It just makes building that much easier. And as far as cloning goes, you know, if you use, like there's a, there's a number of, number of different uh, products out there. I mean, there's a Cronus, uh, but I use Macrium, Macrium, uh, Macrium Reflect 7 Free. Um, it's an older version, but you can do, <coughs> you can clone um, on the free version. Uh, and you can clone a boot drive, so you just stick your M.2 into an enclosure, plug it in via USB, uh, run the clone uh, off the old hard drive, and, um, and it takes it across, and then you plug your M.2 in, and away you go. So it's really good. But I think the later versions, uh, that's a feature you have to pay for, so if you can get hold of uh, Reflect 7 free, then that is a, uh, a much better option. Uh, all right, so let's do some, uh, I suppose I'll put this back on. Um, now, I have that so it's easier to run up there. Line it up. Hate sleeves sometimes, they just get in the way. Being that it's uh, Friday afternoon, the end of the working week, what does it help us to, so still a couple of hours. But uh, Mrs. Doc um, and me uh, will be heading down to our local for our management meeting. <clears throat> to debrief from the week and look forward to the weekend. Even though I do tend to work on the weekend, um, still a weekend. I don't feel guilty if I decide, you know what, I want to sit down and watch a movie. Now, I've got a bone to pick with you, Netflix. You're telling me how the, uh, the new movie, Extraction 2, was out today. 
But what you fail to tell me, until after a bit of research, is that it's not available until sometime in the afternoon. Put a friggin' time on it. I don't think it's, much, it's uh, too much to ask. All right, so there's our uh, USB, uh, front USB header. I'll try and do it a little bit this way so you can see what's going on. So as you can see, we, we, can, we can feed some of the cables down through here. Uh, what have we got there? HD audio. Let's see if I have an easier time than last time I, when I did the uh, media server build. Had a hell of a time with the, uh, the HD audio. Not this time though, straight on. USB. And da -da 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 -da. Where are you? I can't quite see because of the bloody light. Ah, oh, there. Staring me straight in the face. We'll pop it on there. Some people say, you know, connect these little buggers um, before you put the, uh, the motherboard in. And yeah, that's probably a good idea. I never think of it until after, but uh, you know, it don't matter. All right, so what do we got? What have we got? Who are you? Who are the HD LED? And you are positive, so you go down in the bottom left. Positive being out on the left, I believe. Doesn't tell me. And there's no, well, I know there is a, there is a setup guide, but look, I just take a punt. So um, the power LED will be above that. And that should be those single ones. Yep. Which one is positive? Should be the green one because white's usually the ground. Yes. Correct on window. So positive on the left. Now, I believe, from memory, on those front uh, header pins, you've got the uh, power LED positive, then power LED negative, then the next two are your power switch, um, and polarity doesn't matter with the switch. Directly below the power is your reset switch header. Again, polarity doesn't matter. And then coming back around, so I've gone clockwise, so this will be sitting under the uh, hard drive LED uh, headers, is your um, uh, sorry, power LED on the top left. Yeah, I think that's what I said. Directly under them is your hard drive um, uh, LEDs. So those ones, the LEDs, you need to get your positive and negative polarity sorted out. Um, reset and power, uh, as I've said previously, it is just completing a circuit. So the circuit's open, um, and when you push the button, that connects the circuit via this little header, so it doesn't matter where, what, if it's po um, which way around it is, because um, yeah, it's just there to close that circuit. It's much like a micro switch in an arcade machine. For, you know your your pew pew button. All right, so they're in there, and they're already sorted. So <clears throat> let's move these other things. Because what I want to do now is I just want to give these just a little bit of a little bit of guidance. Um, and you always end up with one that's just a bit longer than the others. Uh, now this is nice to see on a cheap case. You've got some anchor points for your cable ties for uh, cable management. So good on you, um, routinium. I'll just grab some of these uh, Lucy's. Didn't mean to clean them up. So we're just going to whack a few cable ties on just to keep these, uh, you know, under control. Under control. If you heard that, that was some notification on my phone. 
could have been anything. But again, I don't know if that will reach because I'm mic'd up here, but whether that phone, you're a tiny one, aren't you? Uh, you still, still have a, a, a purpose to serve. Uh, so you can go there. What I might do is grab these ones. And then this is just to make it so it's not a um, complete bird's nest on the back end here. And then we'll get one through that. Bearing in mind I've got the um, power cable to run down here as well. So we'll, we'll leave that at that and we'll trim them off. bite me you bastard all right so I'm gonna feed see that yep I'm gonna feed this fella through here and which way is he gonna come through there so let's see if I can just feed him through that way I can keep him on that side on as Borat would say very nice it's probably a terrible Borat but you have it in your mind you think oh that's going to sound all right maybe maybe and then you do it and you think probably shouldn't have done that now I might be able to pass this um, fan Molex at the back just to keep things a little bit tidier in here yeah that way we don't really see that cable so I'll dangle him the 12 volt fella and we are gonna be poking all of these through the back just to keep things tidy the length on this power supply cables isn't too shabby. I've seen far worse. I mean, you would expect it to, to reach the distance. Oh, that's a PCIe dork. Um, you would expect it to reach the, um, the, you know, within the case, but I've seen ones that don't, and you've got no hope of running them anywhere. So it is nice uh, that you can do that. I'm going to put that above there. That's the 12 volt you're clicking on. Click. All right. All right, so as you can see, forget them for a minute because I'll be moved. I have to run the 12 volt up there. Uh, it's not really a lot I can do. Um, you could run it through if you really wanted to, but that's not going to impede flow. I'm going to anchor it back here. Um, so we can, I'm going to tie it to the main power and then anchor that. So that way it's not going to find its way back into the case too easily. This is a flimsy cable tie. Get in. Okay, so that's them together. And now let's... See if we can actually I think it would be easier if I just do that. There we go. It's through the same anchor point and behind those other cables. So you can see it's it's up against 
them and it's just holding it so it's not going to fall back into the case. If I was doing a, uh, a gaming machine, I would spend a lot longer uh, on cabling. Because you can, you, can, um, you can turn that into somewhat of an art form if, you're, um, you know, if you've got the patience and the time. So all I need, I don't need any of these. I certainly don't need them here. I just need the Molex. Molex. So we'll poke them through and then we'll figure them out. Pokey, pokey, pokey. All right, so that. So let's find Mr. Molex. So obviously there's only one way these can go. You got two in so you can daisy chain them together. Uh, you don't see that a lot anymore these days though. Um, so we'll just pop the plug into there. And now, because we're not, we're, all we're going to need later on is a, a single SATA connector for the, um, for the, uh, uh, who should we call it? The uh, optical drive. I'll keep him, I'll keep him separate. Get over there. These fellas though, need some more cable ties. That rubber band has just gone completely icky. Okay, a couple of these. I might even put these like. Yep. In fact, yeah, I'm going to leave that other. I'll go down this way because I want to have the option of adding a, um, a mechanical drive or even a uh, you know a 2.5 inch drive. So obviously we're going to need some way to power that. But I'll just tie everything else off quite nicely. Let me trim this. One, two, a three. Now, let's go down there, get all these bastards together, and go yoink. All right, now you, my darling, what will we do? Like, what will we do with you? Leave you out. See if we can. I'm trying to get it to a position where I can, you know, pop it in here, but not be uh, something that's going to flop around in the case and end up being visible from the front. Well, I mean, it's not a, it's not really that big a deal because it's a, it's not a clear case, but I don't want. Lots of rattling and carrying on, so I'll I will tie these up, and then I'll leave those SATA running free. Me you. It, it is worth it to, uh, even if you can't see them, keep your cables organised. Uh, because it, it just, you don't want to get in the way and you know, muck up your airflow or your temps or, you know, just end up just being a general pain in the backside. <clears throat> now there's another one I missed. Right, and this fella, uh, he will be 
going onto the optical. So I'm just going to leave him at the front for now. So that's, you know, that's fine. It really is. <clears throat> now, to get the optical, um, just go, boink. It just pops open. Uh, there's nothing fancy up here. It's just, there's no tool free. You've got to screw, you've got to screw them in. <clears throat> um, but that's that's fine. So as far as a forty nine dollar case goes, uh, it's it's pretty well built. Um, only real complaint I can see is that, that uh, I/O shield is a bit difficult to get in without taking the fan off. Um, but that's not a big deal to wake him out. Um, so I guess um, that's the end of the build. So what we do, might do is we might um, plug him in and fire him up and just uh, get windows happening, just to make sure everything's uh, tickety-boo. So, clean things up, put that down there. Don't need that on for the moment, so we'll fold him out the way. So, the moment. Of truth. Ran the other way. So off. <clears throat> HDMI. A moose. Now, I'm not going to be uh, connecting the internet. Uh, I never do when I'm installing. Um, when you're installing Windows 11 Home, you often have to use a little hack to be able to install a local account. One of my other videos explains how to do that. Uh, it's, it's very simple. There's two, there's two ways. There's a, there's a, you know, you invoke the command prompt, prompt and enter a code there, or you just enter a bogus um, email address such as no at thankyou.com and any password you like, and then it goes, oops, something happened, uh, and you can go local. So it just depends if you want to, you know, bash it out on the keyboard or, or not. Uh, Windows 11 Pro, I haven't done it for such a long time because uh, I'm usually upgrading 10 Pro. Um, I think it may give you the option if you're not plugged in. We'll find out, won't we? Uh, two secs, I'll go grab my installation media. All right, got my little, my little pencil case goodies. Now, can you see that screen from there? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, you don't need to see in detail, but you can see it. So uh, I'll plop him into the front. Power on. Push the button, Max. And we have the LEDs are lighting up, so I've got them the right way around. Um, and now we just wait for everything. First time boot takes a bit of time. Here we go. CPU or memory change, please enter setup, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we'll just go default values, that's enough. Yeah, quite often on your first boot, um, the motherboard, it has to sort of register the RAM and the processor. So your first boot is going to take longer to get something on screen. So sometimes uh, that can be a bit of a scary moment. You're thinking, oh my God, what have I done wrong? Um, but fear not, uh, some motherboards take longer than others. ASRock seems to take the longest. Um, I'm still on the fence about them. I mean, they have some nice looking boards, uh, but they are a bit flimsy. I've got them in my main machine and uh, it just kind of feels like it's just something not quite right about it. Now, it's been blue screening a bit lately. Uh, now, I don't know if that is the, um, I need the mouse pad. Um, I'll move it down here. I don't know if it's a video card or the motherboard because um, it, 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 it's too quick that it just crashes before I can even get an error report. Uh, okay, time and currency format, Australia. Australia, mate. Australia, yes. Install now. 
and Windows 11 and 10 installing is uh, so much quicker. I don't have a product key. I do, but I never put it in until I've got the, everything installed. Uh, just in the uh, 11 Pro, uh, in the off chance that um, there's a problem with Saturn motherboard, uh, I would like to do some a bit of a burn-in test first uh, because it would really be annoying if you put your key in, it got in, and then it um, activated, and then, oh, something wrong with the motherboard. So you've got to RMA and get another one. Then you've got to, I mean, there's ways around it, but if you haven't set up a Microsoft account, uh, Microsoft may not, may not care. Uh, in the past, I have had that situation, and when you phone them up, they're, they're, they have been good, um, but there's no guarantee. Uh, so the last thing you want to do is have a activated system that needs a new motherboard straight away, and all of a sudden you've got an activation issue. So I always, because you can, don't put it in until the very last thing, um, because you know there's pretty much zero limitation on an unactivated copy of Windows. The the biggest one being that um, you can't personalise through the right click context menu. Um, you know, so change your background, but there are other ways of doing that. Just go find the picture you want and right click that and go set as desktop background. Um, so, but. Um, Fully intend to activate it, but as I said, this is purely to get the machine up and running, test it, make sure it's all good, um, and give it a bit of a test. And then when I'm happy it is, I'm going to take that hard drive out and I'm going to pop it into an enclosure, um, which I have uh, somewhere in my bag, I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, just run a clone from the old drive and then pop it in and let it um, do its thing. Now there's a possibility it's not going to run very well because it's uh, an older machine. Um, it's got to run at least as good. Um, and when I say that, the machine has to be running good to begin with. If I get given a machine and it's running like a, a piece of shit, basically, um, I'll, I'll try the clone, but in, in a new machine, if it's still running like, a, like an ass, um, then no, I won't give it back to the client. I will uh, do a fresh install and do my best to get the machine back to how it was. The reason I like to do a clone when I can is because sometimes they might have some software that's a bit harder to get, or they, you know, say, say they've got Picasa. Now you can still get the files for that um, to install it, but if they've got like a complex um, library set up with uh, all their um, uh, folders and what have you, uh, you know. You, you've got to try and you, then you've got to you've got to go and find the appropriate area uh, files and copy them out, which is usually in like the um, app data file somewhere. Copy that out and then paste it into the <coughs> excuse me into the uh, into the new machine. Um, so it's all doable, but the more there is to do, the longer it takes. Now I charge a flat fee to do the build, which includes data transfer. So you want to try and make it as economical for yourself as possible. Uh, occasionally get caught out and it ends up taking you a long time. It's like that's just the risk you run. I like to offer um, transferring the data across. So when I give the machine back, it's ready to go for the client. They can just plug it in and go, wow, how quick is this compared to my old one? And they're ready to go. The, the most they might have to do is sign into their email uh, or you know a couple of things here and there. But um, I will set their printer up when I take it back for them. Um, it's all part of the service because I believe when you buy a computer, the last thing you want, like if you go buy a car, well then you don't have to then go home and you know spend a couple of hours setting it up exactly as you want. Like you know, it, it's ready to go as soon as you drive it out of the car yard. You know, you adjust your seat, your mirrors, all that kind of stuff. It's good to go. Why should you go to a big box company, pick up a machine, and then have to go through the setting up of Windows for one thing, um, and then you know, figure out how you put your printer in and how you know, and I'll get my stuff across from the other one. It's like it's too much for some people. Some people love it. Some people just get lost, uh, and then inevitably end up doing something that causes themselves a bit more grief than it should. They end up being sucked into those Norton promotions, or even worse, McAfee, 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 McAfee. Always get that confused. Um, so yeah, I like to uh, do all that for them, so uh, so that they can just go, oh good, I can start using it. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I do. Uh, some places just say, no, nope, we're not going to do any of that. That's your responsibility, and fair play to them. That's that's how they do it. That's how they do it. 
just be upfront with your client and just say, this is what, what, what you can expect and then go from there. Um, all right, here we are at the setup screen. So let's see if we have the option to do an offline thing. Country, Australia, yes. Keyboard, US, yes. One last second keyboard, no, I don't. Let's connect you. All right, so it doesn't have the option um, that I, uh, I, I, I thought it did. I have seen that somewhere else. But so what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna go, I'm gonna try the uh, command prompt way. I just like doing it that way. Uh, as I said, you can just go, um, you know, plug your network in and then go through and as if you're setting up an account and just go no at thankyou.com, uh, password, anything, you know, you just smash your keys, doesn't matter. And then it's gonna error because there's too many failed attempts on that, on that account. And then it'll, it'll allow you to do a local um, uh, account. Uh, and I, I think they should have left that option in here. We shouldn't have to be digging around to try and find it. The fact that we can do it um, means, yeah, it's an option. So give us that option. Don't force us into being a Microsoft you know, lackey. Uh, there are reasons, genuine reasons for a Microsoft account. Um, and if you want to use it, then that's there. But there are people who don't. For, my, for me, for instance, I get company laptops come through that are in a different town to me. So I get it, I'll set it up, um, set up the machine uh, under a local account. I'll add all the soft software the company needs, like Office and blah, blah, blah. Um, and once that's done, I'll add it to the uh, Active Directory, um, you know, they're, they're the company's Active Directory. And, uh, and then you know, the staff can log in that way. I don't want to have to set up with a, a local a Microsoft account. It just adds extra annoyances for me. So give us the option, Microsoft. Um, okay, so here I go, O-O-B-E, um, backslash, backslash, forward slash? Yeah, I think so. Uh, O-O-B-E, backslash, uh, bypass, N-R-O, return, that'll restart. Um, and that does some voodoo behind the scenes, and then all of a sudden we can have a local account. And it's happy days. Um, so once you know how to do it, it's not a big deal. It just, it's just annoying that they make you do it. But I mentioned McAfee before, McAfee. McAfee, I think it is. Uh, I watched the McAfee special on one of the streamers. I can't remember if it was Netflix or Prime or Stan or whatever. Um, he was a bit of a dickhead, really. Uh, you know, watching it, I didn't like his product to begin with, but watching it made me sort of think, I trust your product even less because he just seems like, to me, it seems like a bit of a con man. Um, here we go, I don't have internet. Um, and he basically was always trying to outsmart the law. Uh, I mean, none of us want to pay more tax than we need to, but we all pay our fair share. Um, but him, no, no, no. And anything he could, uh, you know, it all was to benefit him and he just went a bit loopy in the end. So I sort of think, I don't know. I don't know how, how hands-on he was with his software company uh, or hands-off, but it made me think phew, if I'd ever been considering uh, doing something like, you know, using that, that um, software, that uh, maybe decide, no. Uh, but any of them, like Norton, <laughs> McAfee, <laughs> Trend Micro, <laughs> um, they're, I don't like them, but they're better than Norton. Um, any of the free ones, like Avast, AVG, um, they all suck now. I mean, particularly AVG. Uh, it always has a habit of being almost impossible to install without their special tool. But Avast used to be good. Uh, but now, like any other free one, it's just so needy. It's, it's all these pop-ups. And even the paid ones are guilty of it. Like every, everything that happens, it pops up. Norton pops up. Um, you know, or this happened or... Um, yeah, and some of, sometimes you sort of think, oh, okay, but you know, plug the USB in, uh, and then you pop up. You plug the USB in. I know, I just did it. Um, and it's just in your face and so needy. I mean, what do you want, a metal? Get over yourselves. So I don't like them. I'll use Windows Security uh, and be done with it. Uh, everything else can kiss my balloon knot. So now I'm just going to grab... Ugh. This is your network cable. Now that we have a Windows desktop, um, and 
Just make sure that's all hunky dory. Is that is that cable actually plugged in on the other? Oh, it's blinking. Oh, there we go. Uh, all right. So I um, and Microsoft Edge. This is um, one, two, three, four. That's four rubbish things I have to click through. They might not seem like a lot, but you install Chrome, you're ready to go. Edge, you've got to click through four things before you can even use the bloody thing. Um, so I'm not a, not a fan of Edge, even though it is built on Chrome. And it uses Bing. You do a search in Bing, uh, you know, and you, you're not, you're not going to get relevant results for half of the first page. It's all um, rubbish. Uh, block, okay, speed test. 780, 790. We're getting close to, ticks over to 800. 806 megabits per second download and 35 to 40 up. So network's running fine. Um, uh, yep, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna run the updates, even though I'm going to be cloning over this, I wanna run the updates. I wanna run it through some normal performance uh, before I put anyone and the other data on there because I want to just make sure it's all operating as, uh, as you would expect. Um, and, and then we'll be uh, good to go. But uh, the primary purpose of today was to look at this, uh, this case. And you know what, for 49 bucks, um, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna do much better for 49 bucks. I've just noticed on the side here, it's got a slot for um, uh, like SD uh, cards and what have you. However, there's nothing behind it. It's like it's, uh, um, Maybe they thought about it. Maybe other models have actually a card reader there. So there's a card reader slot, but there's no card reader. Um, interesting. Um, but yeah, nice rounded edges on the inside. There's nothing in there that you're going to slice your finger open on, which is uh, very good. Uh, there's a, root, there's a, a mounting point um, on top of the hard drive caddy. Um, I don't know. No, you can't really see from that angle. And I sort of constrained by cables here. Uh, but there is, there's a uh, 3.5 inch desk, uh, uh, hard drive caddy, which will take two hard drives. And then you've got, an, uh, you can put a 2.5 on top of that. There is a retention bracket, but you've also got um, just on the other side of here, uh, you can put two 2.5 inch drives. So you can get one, two, <coughs> um, one, two, three, four. You could you could get five drives, two 3.5s and three 2.5s in there if you if you wanted. So that's that's pretty good. Um, and it is a. I think it's a. I think you would just get a full size ATX board in this because it is classed as a uh, ATX motherboard supported. Yeah. Okay. So, but it's one of your smaller ATX. Um, it's not your full full tower. It's a mid mid ATX tower. But um, so full ATX support. Uh, reasonable cable management uh, options, um, nothing spectacular, um, good build quality, and, and these are the uh, expansion slots, they are the removable kind and reinstallable are they or are they the, no they are not, they are permanent so once you break it off you have to find something else to fill it if you need to close that hole off. Um, not a big deal. The back is a bit flimsy, I will say that. Um, and not a big fan of this retention system, particularly on a, on a more flimsy thing. So you'd want to screw your cards in. Um, but I, I, once again, you're probably not going to use this very often for uh, a gaming machine unless you're going to replace that power supply. Because um, even, even if you toss the power supply out or just keep it as a, um, as a spare, um, you know, you're going to still have a good value case for 49 bucks. And uh, it doesn't look bad, I have to say. It looks very similar to other ones that I've, I've used for budget builds that cost more. 
um, you know, with your, it's got your simple power button on the front and your reset button next to it and your blue light to say it's on and your red flashing hard drive light. Um, three USBs on the front, two of which are, um, one is USB 3 and I think the other two are just USB 2. So one USB 3 and two USB 2s, um, headphones and microphone uh, and, and that's it. And then the Phantom SD card which doesn't actually exist. Uh, yes, made in China. Fans blowing out. Oh, get the crap out of me. And rubber, rubber or plastic? Plastic feet on the bottom. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, satisfied with this as a budget box. I would use this again for a budget machine. Uh, I wouldn't use it for a, a gaming machine. And I wouldn't use it for an office machine. An office machine, I want something a little bit more robust uh, because they usually get treated pretty roughly. Um, you might buy for an office machine you might buy the pre-built like hp or, or whatever but a lot of times small business will will would prefer to just to get a couple of custom made boxes and then we'll, we'll use a, a sturdy box that could take take a bit of a boot to the side if uh if it ever happened or you know moving offices or whatever they do tend to get tossed around a little bit so you want something with the robust so i wouldn't use it for office i wouldn't use it for gaming but for budget home uh or even um if you were just doing, say, a basic uh, media box, for instance, something's going to get tucked away, that'd be fine as well. So there's certainly a, a place in the world for this little fella. Um, I'm quite, uh, yeah, quite happy with him. So I think that's all for today. Uh, I don't think I'll worry about doing those drivers. Uh, everything's uh, up and running and, and happy as Larry. And um, I'll just do the clone and put the optical in probably tomorrow, because I'm bored now. Well, I'm not bored, I've just, you know, it's Friday afternoon, it's getting, must be 10 past three, that's, uh, that's pretty good for Friday. I, I'd say it's knock-off time, wouldn't you? I would, the dogs certainly do. All right then, well, I'll leave it there, and I hope this has been um, worthwhile. Uh, I don't, I, I don't, try, I don't know what I was gonna say there. I, I try not to ramble on too much, but I know I do. But uh, yeah, Ro, what's it called again? Rotranium. So I think titanium, uh, but robot. Rotanium. Uh, it's not a bad name. It's not a bad name. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. We uh, we had a successful build with the i5 and what have you, um, and a, a very good budget case. So Rotanium, if you happen to see this, uh, well done. Well done. Until then, guys. Um, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. Check out my other videos. There'll be more to come as I as I go along, and I'll eventually upgrade my equipment. But uh, until then, I uh, I'll uh, I'll push the button, Max, because I don't need to have that up anymore. And I'll uh, I'll see you next time. So, see us.